years ago when I started my PhD in Discord here at BMC. So I'm very happy also of another occasion because now I concerning the Danish infrastructure. I'm happy to present our new baby. This is the Okay. Our new baby is a new Danish national supercomputer, especially for life sciences, called Computer Room. There's more than 16,000 cores. We have now managed to get on the top 500 list of the world supercomputers. We are on the rank 120, wait, 121. And of course, if you're a biomedician, this is great having this kind of muscle behind you. But what is really, really great with this design is, this is a computer, supercomputer, special built for biomedician, not for physicists, not for microfluids, particle physics. This is for crashing and crashing with assembly, mapping, uh, graphing, and so on. So, why would we need in Denmark, in a small country, why would you need a life science supercomputer? So, around 2% of Denmark's GDP is related to life science. We have a very large pharmaceutical sector. In the academics, we are really working together with the pharmaceutical sectors and industry. There's a strong historic tradition for public-private partnerships in research. And together with the industry, we accumulate a lot of data, a lot of weird unstructured data, starting from DNA to patient records, patient journals, images, all the 5,000 different variants of omics, lifestyle, and of course, the reason why we are here now, the explosion of the DNA that they ingest data. I don't need to tell you all, all about these different omics, stuff, what they are, but when we had our previous supercomputer, we had success, we had failure, we learned our lessons, our experience, our mistakes, our pitfalls, we tried to bring in and identify how can we now design the next supercomputer that we have for actually being able to do more, better. We realized very quickly that we have a lot of changes data types. Second thing we realized, one size, one solution does not fit at all. Of, of these five points here, each of these different omics needs at least two of them. Either you need very high single core performances, or you need very high, so we know the multi node performances, the scalabilities, and most of all, very fast disk read write access. IO is the major bottleneck. Every PhD student starting out in our now group, they start with small uh, pilot projects, the data is coming in a couple of terabytes. After three days, it expands, it explodes to 20, 30 terabytes. And all of us doing grabbing or assembling, you know, one terabyte is not enough anymore for a complex, assembly, complex species. That is also called the omics onslaught. So, one of the lessons we learned that bioinformaticians are a very bad at writing efficient computer code. <laughs> Why? We just we may, may quick and dirty script. We mentioned we don't use it next week. After one week, we have submitted to GitHub and publication, and everyone else is doing it and trashing the computer. We, we are very good at crashing systems. Everyone in my school has at least three times or five times wrote down our complete supercomputer, including me. This is the part where we really want to see why, how can we fix that. We can't fix the mathematicians. <laughs> Most mathematicians will not be computer scientists. What we learned is, when you look at storage, size matters sometimes, but it's not all about size. It's all about the throughput. The data, the storage has to be very close to CPUs. The more the, uh, the data has to travel, that's a waste of time. And also the data, the distortion, doesn't be the best, the, 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 the biggest, but it has to be kind of stable. Computing, we don't need the fastest. Of course, it's always good to have fast processors, but it's about the scalability, and at the end, about the I.O. 
And then the original idea of having everything user orientated doesn't work anymore. We work with industry, we work with healthcare. We have uh, secret projects which you can't tell anyone about. We have uh, sensitive patient data. It's not, if you just use the, the Unix success groups, it's really getting very, very messy. We need a complete new way of creating groups and make it easy to share. We don't want to fill in formulas three, three months afterwards to get an FTP account that can transfer data. Everything is about user-defined environments. It has to be flexible. And also, also a computer should not be an island or a basement where we don't, don't be encapsulated with each other. We want to work with the industry and healthcare. It's about integration with all their systems also. Data, if the data is relevant, it has to be accessible. So, with these lessons, we started the design of our new supercomputer. The design period, the design was, took one and a half years. When we were finished with the design, then it took only four months to actually build it and ship it. Uh, I won't go into details because at three o'clock, Peter will actually from the HP will go more into details than I can and talk about all the stuff. But it's around 16,000 corners, um, some fat nodes with uh, one terabyte memory, very fast internet, and it's built on a green field basis. That means if you look at brownfield thing is that you have a you have a computer in the basement and you want to increase it, then you're limited by space, how many actually computers do you fit in, the power, the cooling. So you build a computer that can to the to the specific self descriptive room. Here we started from scratch. We had a complete empty field at the Leisure, the Duke campus, 2,500 square meters, and we built a rapid debt to a computing system. So it's from, from the beginning, right now the, uh, the supercomputer uh, takes 800 square meters. It's already built in that it will support a growth of 10 times. And we have redundancy in every single support system. So it's, it's open like here. It's, uh, Guarded 10 for 7 thermal cameras, I think it's uh, from extend to break even, whatever it takes 10 minutes until the cure and quality is there. The design is it's pod based, you can, yeah, like that. So, every one of these, but uh, long, they have this, you know, the super cameras will be uh, inside. You can easily adapt by just to bring in more of the codes. After the presentation, I have a three-minute video where you actually can see the codes and how it looks like. And it's green also from another perspective. If you come to the Roskilde Festival next time, think about when we are running our assemblies, we are heating the town of Roskilde. Or you can see the town of Roskilde is actually cooling down our computer. These are my senior researchers, Simon Asanson and Ben Pearson. They were the first one to actually try it out and do some runs and see how it, how it really works. It was crystal for them, for them. They were so happy. Just some, some specs. Hello? No. Where did that? Okay. I think there are some slides missing now after we try to fix the video. Okay, I can just tell you. Um, first ones where we, we did with, for example, just human mapping. Um, well, I don't know the numbers. Okay, I, we go back. The only thing which you, which you remember now <laughs> is if you run all path of the best de novo assemblers in our previous system, which was a good supercomputer, it could take between around three weeks because most because it created so many files. Uh, trashing our, uh, our file system in Zion. After we, well then we also could run, run a couple of instances. With this new supercomputer, the, the time from three to four weeks was reduced to 10 days, 
and we, and we can run on the flat node, we can run 27 of them in parallel. This was something we've never been able to do before. <laughs> so, yeah, some slides are missing, but let's skip that. We can try to show you the yeah. Martin, where is the... <laughs> from the healthcare sector are recorded and available in a digital form. With the help of powerful supercomputers, we can transform these data into valuable knowledge on complex diseases, more precise and cheaper medicine, or new biotechnological applications. Denmark has taken an important step towards making this happen with the investment in a life science supercomputer facility at DTU. The system, called Computer Realm, will enable researchers across Danish universities, companies, and healthcare institutions to collaborate on data and computational resources. It's also an important part of the European life science infrastructure, ELIXA, that connects Denmark with many of Europe's leading bioinformatics resources. In order to play a role in today's uh, biology and, and medicine with all those data, we really need capacity and computational muscle. And, and this new supercomputer is really giving us a unique uh, position where we can attract uh, data that we then will not have to pay for ourselves and we can use them in our analysis and combine them with our own data. Thank you. The new life science supercomputer or installation at Riesø is very unique in the way that it is optimized only for life science applications. It means that bioinformatics research, healthcare and the pharmaceutical industry will have an opportunity to work in a collaborative manner on a number of the same curated datasets. This new area of bioinformatics, systems biology, medical informatics, it's not just research, it's, it's also a business, uh, because uh, methods and solutions are, 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 are needed, so there will be a lot of business development, a lot of new companies uh, created in this uh, domain that really spans different uh, worlds, hardcore supercomputing with, 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 with clinical and, and molecular biology domains. It's actually not so difficult to predict the future in this uh, area because the data will become cheaper and cheaper, the supercomputers will become more and more uh, effective, and we really need to put these things together in order to make treatment more uh, precise. And um, I'm very optimistic because we have the means and we also have the needs. We need to make treatment um, more efficient and, and, and uh, cheaper. Uh, but we will also be in, uh, in a very good position to achieve that goal. Any questions? So it's a central, or you mentioned it's a distributed or it's a central one? You're just on one location, right? This is on one location, it's uh, in Odisha, where Roskilde is, and then it's connected to the, the, the link with DTU campus. So, but the storage is, the storage is central? Storage there are two storage. different, there's also, uh, the backup systems are two different storage, and they're on two different uh, locations. Exactly where I, I don't know, but uh, hopefully Peter can answer it. So we yeah, have this is Peter. Yeah. Ah, yes, so Peter. the data is replicated from Quincy out to a CBS headquarter. 
uh, what is it, a second copy of the data. So which system you use, which software you use to copy it? Uh, I'll talk about that at 3 o'clock. Please come okay. to a presentation, but we're using a EMC replication. But this is an actual installation, right? It is a centralized It's a, it's a national, it's, it's VCBS own it. Uh, Technical University and Copenhagen University has paid it. <laughs> and it's a national resource. So everyone in Denmark can, as a, also an outside from Denmark, can actually apply for that hard and get access to it. Uh, again, a little bit related to this question about the is it the central infrastructure? Because, for example, in Elixir Norway, you have uh, five clusters located in uh, five cities and distributed storage. Trying to connect between them for bioinformatics, but we are facing a problem now for transferring data when uh, no is saturated. So, are you trying to make that okay? The, the computing infrastructure will be in this place. You have to put the data close to it. Is this the direction that you are going on, or you might have for the expansion at least? different infrastructures in different places and connect them. The expansion will be, we have built up <laughs> this area, 3,500 square meters, right now we are occupying 800. <laughs> the expand, expansion, yeah. expansion will be there. Yeah. We built the infrastructure around between CBS ETU and the research ETU. Do you get snow? What? <laughs> snow. Occasionally. <laughs> But they, they, they look wooden, but they are not wooden, the containers, so they, they can cope with the damage snow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the snow difficult? Yeah, in Kayani it's because... You don't have the cooling problem. Because Otherwise it's the same. So we're in a basement here, so it's, I guess it's... <laughs> have to open the door. Thanks a lot. That was a really nice presentation, and again, it sort of... Uh, Interesting to see how different the uh, implementations we have. So, thanks a lot.